I wanna like ride in this while someone's driving. How fun would that be? That'd be so scary though. Hey all you people, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are in the Florida Keys with the Porsche Boxster 981, also known as the Porsche Cayman without a roof. I am super, super fortunate to be able to check off one of my bucket list check boxes and drive a convertible down the overseas highway in the Florida Keys. This is like, it's like my dream come true right here. And there is no better car to do it in than something like this. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why I think that this is the ideal rental car for vacation in Florida. I'll tell you my initial impressions of the vehicle, as well as the specs, how it performs and handles, and then we'll do a zero to 60 time, and if we have the room, I'll do a quarter mile time. And if not, we're just gonna enjoy the Florida Keys. It's almost golden hour, so you know what that means. We got gold for one hour, let's do it. Florida, the southernmost portion of the continental United States, is often thought of as simply a spot to live out the remainder of a retiree's life, to tan their leather skin in the sun until they die. But it's much more than that. This is the land of stunning sunsets and clear blue waters that attract people from all different backgrounds. Boaters to explore Florida's shallow coast and many islands. Surfers to take advantage of year-long warm waters and consistent waves. And those who are interested in exploring Earth's third largest barrier reef and experience Florida's incredible biodiversity, from fish to reptiles to beautiful and rare birds. It's a place where Hispanic and Cuban culture influence many aspects of life, and where distinct architecture rises above the palm trees. And again, many, many sunsets. But Florida is also a mecca for car culture. Initial driving impressions. I'm coming from a 2014 GTI, so same year, also same car company, VW. This is low to the ground. <laughs> that sounds awesome. This car loves it, over 5,500 RPM. Lovely interior, feels very comfortable. You feel in the car here, you feel connected with it. The clutch, surprisingly heavy actually. Everything just seems so crisp and very tight when you're driving this especially the gearbox. All right, give this a listen, ready? That sounds awesome. That sounds so good in the high RPM. We are in the keys in a convertible. How do you feel? Uh, I feel amazing. This Porsche Boxster 981 has a 2.7 liter flat six engine located behind the rear seats and just in front of the rear axle. And the owner of this cut off the cats and put an aftermarket exhaust system on there. So it sounds like a true sports car. Although it's not the most powerful variant of the Porsche Boxster, that would be the Porsche Boxster S or the GTS, this is still plenty. But it's also little enough power to keep you out of serious trouble while you're on vacation. The 981 goes until 2013 to 2016. And 2016 was the last year for this 2.7 liter naturally aspirated flat six engine. After that, it went to a two liter turbocharged engine, which made more power and got better fuel economy. But this engine sounds so exotic when you rev it out. Just listen to this. It's really not that fast, but throttle response is instant. And so the car just feels very connected to you. So it's electronically assisted steering, unlike the 4C that we were in, which had manual steering. But this is so much better on vacation. It's, it's a lot more relaxed, but at the same time, the steering is so precise and tight that you're not missing any of the feedback from the road. It has a six speed manual transmission, which is hard to find in rental cars. It is a little odd though, having the, the shifter this high up and you really get to just downshift this engine, rev it out. That's why the gearing is so short in this car because it's relatively low on torque. If you want that power, you really have to rev out this engine and make the car work for it. Woo! 
You got the sound of the, uh, the flat six engine, the 2.7 liter right behind our heads here. And what else is nice about the flat six behind our heads is that the car has such an even weight distribution between front and rear that it handles on a dime. And another great thing about the boxer engines is that the center of gravity is so low to the ground, reducing the overall center of gravity of the car. From what I can tell, like no understeer, no oversteer. This is such a fun car. In 2013, they made the Boxster uh, a lot more handsome, kind of squared off the lines a little bit and made it less bubbly. It used to be a chick car. And just like what they did with the Volkswagen Beetle, they made it a little more handsome and masculine looking to appeal to a larger audience and give it more of a road presence. The proportions of this car are beautiful. Um, the 911 still looks better. Along with the beauty of this car, you also get functionality, practicality, you have a frunk, which is actually very deep, and you have a trunk. Come check this out. Um, yeah, we have two backpacks in here, a bunch of sweatshirts, my drone, water bottles. And what's nice is that you have um, a port to top off your fluids, so you don't have to go in, under, in. Will it sleep a not so handy car? Will it sleep a not so handy car guy? I'm Matt Watson with Car Wow. Oh, ah, whoa, this is the jack. All right, Sam, what you're gonna do, you're gonna slam this shut, okay? You can go. Oh, so close. Ah, oh, will not sleep a not so handy car guy. I apologize, folks. Oh. As you can see, plenty of room for luggage on your vacation. Meanwhile, the Alfa Romeo 4C that we rented in Las Vegas didn't have a front. I also think the trunk was smaller than the one optioned in this Boxster. How does it accelerate? What is this like as far as power goes? Well, it's not really meant for straight line acceleration. Uh, this is meant to be fun and nimble around tight turns. All right, zero to 60 time, uh, it's getting a little dark. I am not great at shifting, so we'll see how this goes. Traction control off, sport mode on. Okay, ready? Mm hmm Oh God. what makes this car such a great rental car and such a great vacation car is the fact that it can be a daily driver. A very usable space in the car, it's comfortable enough, gets decent gas mileage, and it's refined enough that you can take this on a road trip to your destination. Some people might disagree with me and say that a rental car should be an opportunity to experience a car which you would never live with as a daily driver. And you know what? There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that, but it all depends on the goal of your vacation. I prefer to rent reasonable cars that people do live with on a regular basis because they're often the most comfortable and practical for a trip, especially if you're going to spend a lot of time on the road. Like I said, it all depends on the goal and itinerary of your trip. So why not rent something that checks off all the boxes? Another benefit of renting a popular car is that it helps me round out my perspective and gain knowledge I otherwise wouldn't have. Tell me in your words why you think this is the perfect vacation rental car. It's loud, it's hot, and it's ready. <laughs> <laughs> I love how it's a convertible. It is also really comfy. I feel like the visibility is really nice. And it matches your nails. And it matches my nails. People always look at you and then you get to wave at them because they're looking at you. While we're on the topic of people looking at us, let me talk about the perception of Boxster owners and Boxster drivers. It's not necessarily a good one. This is the poor man's Porsche. Poor person's, I'm sorry, poor person's Porsche. And even though they're still slightly expensive, uh, people know that. People are like, oh, it's just a Boxster. They couldn't afford a 911. And that's sad, that's sad because these cars are so good. <laughs> Free the Boxer 2021. Another negative thing is that people look at convertibles as non-enthusiast cars. I don't like that, personally. That's weird. Yeah, because traditionally, coupes with the hard tops have a more rigid body. They're known for you know performing better on a track. But 
This chassis is, is 40% more rigid than the previous Boxster. Before, yeah, they used to flex, but nowadays there's almost no difference between a coupe, a hardtop, and a convertible, the Cayman and the Boxster. I say, let's try and break these Boxster stereotypes. I personally like the fact that this is speed yellow, that's what Porsche calls it, um, but a lot of people are gonna look at us and say, oh, they're tourists. You know what, I don't even care. I don't even care. <laughs> oh, and the fact that it's a big camera mounted to the windshield, but you know, other than that. That's why we're getting looks. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So yeah, this might be a touristy car, but I think the most touristy car would have to be the Polaris Slingshot. Yes. I agree. I am so sorry, Chris Young from Driven By Boost. <laughs> I, I mean, they look really fun to drive, but I would never rent one just because they look like you're driving a boom box. Also, if you really like this car, I suggest checking out Driven By Boost. He has a Porsche Cayman that he's been modifying. So it's really fun to check out his videos and see the progress on that car. Heck yeah, go see Driven By Boost. For a long time too, the Boxster was known as a chick car which I hate that. I think that men should be able to drive whatever car they want without being labeled as like a, a feminine man. That's so dumb. But like I said, we got a couple things going for us. The fact that it has an exhaust and the fact that it's a stick. Yeah, so just to recap of the good things so far, it looks great, it sounds great, it handles great, it's a stick, it's relatively comfortable, Plenty of cargo room for medium-sized bags and uh, men who need to hit the gym. It's got somewhat of a cool factor. It's relatively affordable to rent for an exotic car, starting at around $130 a day. And it's a two-seater, so if you have grandchildren or something, you have an excuse to not take them with you. If you really want the two-seater experience but don't want a Porsche, there's plenty of other options on Turo. I considered renting the Fiat 124 Spider, which is pretty much a slightly more rare Mazda Miata, and it's around $94 a day. Another option is the Corvette. This would definitely be a good option if you're looking for more power, at around $161 a day. And probably the closest other car you can get to the Porsche Boxster is the BMW Z4, which comes in at around $110 a day. This is amazing, Sam. Ah, oh, beautiful color. Seven mile bridge in the convertible. Woo! I feel like I'm in Fast and Furious right now, except I don't have a Mitsubishi Eclipse or an Evo. Oh, here's Pigeon Key. Hello, you there? 